Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Lisa Stone with Parenting Aces, and I am joined by Gabby Hesse, who is a student athlete and also a participant in the inaugural class of the Intercollegiate Tennis Association's Tennis for America program. Gabby plays at Florida Southern University, right? And you'll be coming back for your senior year this year. Is that right? Or I you just graduated, graduated in 2020. So, so I just finished up my senior year. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can hear you now. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. I think it's on my end. Sometimes my mic does this. So you talk, tell us a little bit about your life at Florida Southern and I'm gonna work on my mic for one second. <laughs> yeah, so I just graduated from Florida Southern in 2020. Um, so that was, oh, Lisa. I am not sure what happened. Oh, I think you're muted. There we go. Okay. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Perfect. If you don't have any technical difficulties, right? Ugh. <laughs> All right, so, so I just graduated from Florida Southern College, um, played tennis there four years. I went in as a walk-on my, my freshman year and was lucky enough to do that uh, with the incredible program that Florida Southern had as a division two top 10 school. And I was really drawn to the program by the head coach, Trish Riddell, and sitting down with her and talking with her when I first met her about the program. She was so focused on character development. And we always had a saying called ACE, which is attitude, character, effort. And just that commitment to excellence that was shown throughout the entire program. Uh, just really compelled me to to go there, and I was was happy to be a walk on on the team. Um, I didn't get much playing time my freshman and sophomore year, but uh, I definitely worked my tail off. I always after practice if there was anything they had they wanted to work on, and um, so them getting better would make me better. And going into my junior and senior year, I had more opportunities to play on the team. My senior year I ended up earning a partial scholarship for tennis. So that was uh, definitely a big goal I had worked for. And uh, unfortunately, it was it was cut a bit short due to COVID. Uh, but but I'm really happy that I was able to jump right into this opportunity after graduation. With tennis and and you wound up in Florida coming from Colorado. Yes. So big weather change for you. How did Absolutely. you adapt to that? Uh, definitely it was tough because Colorado, we're seen as having the advantage when we go down because we train at altitude, right? But then it was so hot and humid. I felt like like it didn't even matter. It canceled it out. So, but <laughs> um, it was definitely, I loved being in Florida. The winters were nice. I can't complain. Yeah, for sure. I want to just let our viewers know if you guys have any questions for Gabby while we're having our conversation, if you could just type them in the comments and I'm seeing them in real time. So I will <laughs> ask them of her, but um, let's get right into your work with Tennis for America. So this is the first year that the ITA has offered this program that's kind of modeled off of the Teach for America program. And it's obviously focused around tennis. And it was a program that was open to, I think any college tennis player, any current college tennis player could apply, whether they were graduating or going back, or was it just for, for people graduating? It's a year long program. So they were targeting people that had graduated or recently graduated in the past few years. Got it. And so they're doing this program that's sort of an internship um, or maybe a first step into the world of business as it relates to tennis. And they're doing it at sites around the country. 
you applied and were accepted to the program at the Junior Tennis Champion Center in Maryland slash DC. Mm -hmm. um, we know the JTCC because they have produced some amazing junior players who are going on to have amazing professional careers, but also several who have gone on to have amazing college careers. So did you get to choose which program you applied to? And if so, why did you pick JTCC? Yeah, so we, we were able to rank our preferences of, of which places, which was really tough for me because um, the locations are all incredible. Uh, but what really appealed to me with the JTCC was one, their mission. They're very focused on the character development, especially of the traits of sportsmanship, uh, competitive spirit, teamwork. Uh, so they're, that's like in their mission statement. And they're so dedicated to giving back to the communities. Like you look at Francis Tiafo and Robin Montgomery, two players that have come out of the JTCC. They started through their community outreach programs. They never would have, I mean, who knows, but they never would have had that opportunity to play tennis if it hadn't had been for them showing up at the school and handing them a racket and being, here, this is how you hit a forehand. So I think that's a really unique approach is that emphasis on giving back and having their current players in the program volunteer for those is is really special them being able to give back to the programs that gave to them is is really incredible to see and so after i did my research on the jtcc i knew it was a place that i really wanted to be how does jtcc and its mission fit in with your career goals that's a great question um i'm still trying to figure out uh where i want to be down the road but but giving back is a huge part of it i think there's that's how we're going to develop our next generation of american greats is through that grassroots approach through community outreach and development and because if you only have a limited number of people already playing tennis, like what are the chances that they're going to come on to be great? So the more people we can hand rackets to and get on a court, the more chances we have of developing our players. And, and so I think that's something I would like to stay involved in going forward, especially on the giving back side. Um, and I'm definitely really passionate about collegiate tennis and the opportunities that it provides four players. So um, there's a lot of pathways going forward, but JTCC is definitely a, an incredible first step. What was your major? I was a communications major, advertising and public relations, and then a minor in political science. Okay. I'm a poli sci major myself. So um, we have that a bit in common. So, I mean, it makes sense that this whole notion of community giving is important to you. Um, you obviously cared enough to study the whole idea of the political workings of different systems around the world. And, you know, so I, to me, it, it makes perfect logical sense that this would be at the top of your list. Can you tell us about some of your duties at the JTCC as part of the Tennis for America program? What responsibilities do you have? Um, what does a typical day look like for you? Yeah, so I would say that the plan for a typical day when we were hired back in March before COVID hit was definitely different than um, in actuality, but I think the JTCC is working to adapt great to the circumstances. Our main focus is on that community outreach and normal circumstances, we'd be spending some time on court helping with those programs, but also on the administrative end, helping set up, reach out to schools, uh, making those opportunities happen. So right now, my uh, my other fellow, Ava Todd, who went to Davidson and is also working at the JTCC, it, we're both working on developing possibly a virtual community outreach program so that we can still, still have that contact, safe contact with the kids um and find a way to to teach them some some tennis skills that will hopefully translate to when they are able to get back onto the court so there's a lot of focus on that especially through the americorps vista that's where we want to be is is focusing on that giving back 
And we're also doing a lot of, we have a lot of marketing projects in the works too. So um, that's been really fun. It's been a lot of learning. Everyone works really closely together. Um, it's like, I've, I'm three weeks in and I've done video project. I've designed graphics. Um, we've been helping out with the tournament they had. The UTR put on a tournament there, which was really cool to see all the, the safe uh strategies they put into place to make that that play possible so it's been you never know what what tomorrow is going to look like and i, I kind of like that it's it's a lot of fun so in terms of the tournament that jtcc hosted um and they had some great junior players and you know participating in the event were you involved at all in the planning of that event or was it already all in place once you came on board it was in the works once we came on board. Uh, it happened pretty quickly after we started. And we we worked on collaborations with PlaySight and UTR. So that PlaySight is, you know, the technology that allows for streaming of the court. So that was really critical, especially in a COVID time. Um, Cause these are kids looking possibly to get, you know, college scholarships so college coaches can log on. So it's, it's really cool to see how everybody's coming together in this time to to make tennis possible. Right. How are you using your experience as a college tennis player in this role at JTCC now? Yeah, I think I talk a lot, as you may have seen on Twitter, about yeah. um, the, <laughs> the, the skills that college tennis has taught me. And I think no matter what I would be doing now, they would come into play. And that's just... It's being a good teammate when you're you're working with your coworkers. You're all working together to to find the best solution to problems. Uh, you never know, you know what's going to happen, especially with COVID. So it's definitely a lot of problem solving right now. And I think I think those character traits have come into play more than any technical skills on court that that college tennis has taught me. Did you ever have aspirations to become a professional tennis player or was college tennis always your goal? Kind of neither, actually. College <laughs> tennis wasn't a goal of mine until okay. I was a junior in high school. So I was kind of a late bloomer when it came to that. And once I realized I wanted to play tennis in college, it kind of lit a fire under me. And I went from playing a couple hours a week to three hours a day. And... I was, I was lucky to be able to be a part of that program at Florida Southern, like I said, because I was, it was not always in the cards for me. So, and as far as being a pro player, I, <laughs> college was a big enough goal at that time. So yeah. um, I will, I will set my sights on supporting those, those players who want to be pro. As Got it. <laughs> Got it. Were you playing other sports before you jumped into the tennis hardcore? I swam when I was little. I come from a, a big swimming family. Both my parents swam in college. Um, but but the other big part of my life was I actually played the trumpet growing up. And so I wasn't sure which path I wanted to take in college. And once I chose tennis, I have never looked back. Are you still playing the trumpet? I still have it. It's a little tough in an apartment to uh, <laughs> you don't know the neighbors too much. But I, I still have it and hope to uh, play it at some point. I love it. I, I, we hear a lot of tennis players who also have a musical side to them, <laughs> my own son included in that. Um, and I think, you know, music complements tennis really well. Um, so it's interesting that, that that was your decision. You came to that fork, you know, do I go trumpet? Do I go tennis? I love <laughs> that. So um, we have a question. So, um, as you discussed on Twitter, your college team did a lot of community service. What are some of the community activities that your college tennis team conducted and how did they connect you with the community? Great question. That is a really great question. So we did a variety of different opportunities. A lot of them were in conjunction with the other sports teams at the college. We helped a lot with Habitat for Humanity and particularly a program that focused on painting houses for former veterans who were unable to, to take care of that upkeep. And 
so that was really special. We they normally came out and talked with us, and we got to connect with them during that time. Mm -hmm. And so that was a big part about what we did. We also helped out with a a run that ha happened. We were, our school was right on a lake, so it was a common place for five Ks. And so we we woke up early really early one morning every year and and helped hand out water which was always a lot of fun um and then we were we also helped at Snowfest, which is um a lakeland tradition of of making kind of it feel like christmas time in florida which as you know the weather doesn't necessarily uh make it feel like christmas so but they they bring in a big pile of snow and oh, funny. Kids, a lot of the times it's the first times a kid has has ever seen anything like snow so we help make sure they obviously get up and down safely and it's a great time to have conversations with the parents and and really connect with the community and so it, I like the variety of the ways we were involved I think that was a really cool part of it you know, one of the things happening, we keep mentioning COVID and the uncertainty of COVID and all the stuff going on. We're seeing a lot of college tennis programs getting cut and there's been a ton of conversation around the importance of these college teams connecting with their communities, making themselves invaluable to the local community so that when the college administrators are looking for ways to save money, college tennis isn't one of those things that pops onto their radar. And I'm wondering if you saw that with your team and your program, did you get the feeling that because of all this community service you were doing, you know, you guys were safe? I definitely don't think any college tennis program at this point is, is safe, which is really, it hurts to say. Um, but I think tennis is always going to be on the outskirts because it, it affects the, the smallest number of people compared to bigger teams. Um, and I would like to say that I think it has made impact positively with the administration in terms of our, our community service. But but nothing is is ever really certain in these times. I think it definitely helped us draw out some fans in the community, which is always a positive thing. Um, sure. So, so yeah, I definitely think. Oh, sorry, Sully's coming to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go over there. <laughs> um. So getting back to your work at the JTCC and this Tennis for America program, you're there for a year, you have a one year commitment. Do you have like certain milestones that you've set for yourself that you're hoping to achieve along the way? Or does the program itself have reporting requirements or milestones that they've set for you that you then have to achieve to continue on? How does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are technically hired through AmeriCorps VISTA, which is a, a service program through the US government. And they work with the sponsoring organization, which would be the JTCC in this case, to help set those, those milestones along the way, those goals. And so we do have some set for both community outreach and for marketing, um, but a lot, like I said, a lot has changed because of COVID. Yeah. And so we're, we're looking for ways to adapt that. And like I said, like virtual programming, I think is going to be the next, next wave, especially as a lot of after school programs and schooling in general is going to go online. And so finding a fun, fun way to, to disconnect from, from school and the current climate and, and stay engaged, I think, is, is gonna be very important. So we're still trying to figure out those goals at the moment, mm -hmm. but. I mean, you're only three weeks in, right? This is still very new and yeah. it looks, I'm sure, nothing like what any of the organizers anticipated it was gonna look like this summer. Um, you know, and I, I keep thinking, if you weren't participating in this program, 
you would be out trying to find a job or hopefully working in your first job. Hopefully you would have secured something before COVID hit. But if you hadn't, I mean, what are you hearing from your teammates, your classmates, um, your peers around the country that may have gone to different schools who aren't participating in Tennis for America? What's the job landscape like for recent college graduates and what are the opportunities like? It's pretty, it's pretty dismal right now. Um, hearing from a lot of my friends from Florida Southern, just finding any kind of job, whether it's related in the field, whether it's working at a supermarket chain, it's just really difficult in these times. And I don't, I think that applies to everyone, but especially, you know, not having much on the resume makes it, makes it pretty difficult. So hopefully uh, some opportunities will be able to come open for more entry level positions in the future, but it's, it's looking a bit glim right now. Yeah. So in terms of next steps for you, once Tennis for America comes to an end a year from now, and I know, gosh, so much could change between now and then. I mean, things are changing every day. But do you feel like this is giving you an opportunity to build a network, to hone specific skills that you can take into that next position, whatever that is, or potentially create a position for yourself permanently at JTCC and continue to work there, or maybe a combination of those things? Yeah, absolutely. Like all of the above are definitely applicable in, in what I hope to work for for in the next uh, 11 months now. Um, but it, I think as far as being on the ground floor, like of the JTCC, that's there's no better opportunity and way to develop those skills. I I feel like I've learned more in, in three weeks than I have the past semester at school or, you know, it's just it's really an important experience to to be on the ground level of something as big as that. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these comments are coming in. I think you've got a big fan club out there. So <laughs> welcome everybody. I hope y'all are enjoying our conversation. Um, one of the comments is that you're a great trout fisherwoman. Um, I gotta <laughs> ask about that. I can't let that go by. Oh, that's from my my uncle. We he took me fishing for the first time uh, out in Colorado before I moved to Maryland. So um, <laughs> he, he he definitely takes the cake for the the best uh, trout fisherman. But I'm honored. Thank you, Uncle Phil. <laughs> <laughs> so while you were in school, you know, I talk to college tennis players all the time. I. I parented a college tennis player, so I know intimately what you guys go through to prepare and get yourselves ready to play at the collegiate level. It leaves very little time for things like after school or summer jobs or after school or summer internships, because while you came to the game a little later in your junior year of high school, you still were pretty young at that point, and I suspect, and, and you can correct me, but maybe had never had a summer job other than maybe doing some babysitting or house sitting or dog walking or one of those things that younger kids get the opportunity to do. So can you tell us what other types of jobs or internships, if any, you had and how that prepared you for what you're doing right now? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think I tried to find ways to uh, combine ways I could stay on court, you know, and get those opportunities to train while also getting paid. And and so I ended up getting a job at Lifetime Fitness in Colorado Springs uh, as, as I was in high school and a couple summers in college. So so I was helping teach, but also, you know, having access to that, that court time is very very important. So, so that was definitely a good way to balance that out. And going into my senior year, I actually had the incredible opportunity for an internship at the USDA national campus in Orlando. So that it was like a dream come true. I say going to the national campus is like going to Disney world for tennis players. It's just an incredible place. And and so having, you know, they have over 100 courts there and setting up 
times to hit with some of the great athletes that that now work there was was really a great learning opportunity and i got my butt kicked a number of times on the court uh but it was it was great training going into my senior year and also obviously having that as a first office job was unbelievable and i learned so much and that was where i really discovered i wanted to continue in the tennis industry after college great how did you find out about tennis for america my college coach, Trish Riddle, actually sent me the opportunity as soon as it was sent out by the ITA. And she's like, I think this would be perfect for you. You should look into this. And I, I jumped on it as soon as I, I heard about it. It just it just felt right. I mean, they, I think they announced it like back in January, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. there wasn't a whole lot of lead time in terms of finding out the program exists, applying for the program, then COVID hits. <laughs> yeah. Then you find out you've been accepted, but meanwhile, college tennis is done for the year. So, I mean, it was a lot all in a very short period of time. Yes. I, I remember I was up in, in South Carolina with the team. We were having our spring break trip and that was, you know, right as COVID was hitting the United States. And then I had my interview virtually for this position and and then next week when I called to accept the position, I also told uh, Dave Mullins on the phone, I was like, yeah, my college program was canceled too. I'm, I'm going home. And so it was just crazy to have that ending and beginning line up so perfectly, but I was definitely very, very lucky with the timing and the way that all worked out. So my mic is acting up again. I apologize. Um, when COVID hit, I, I didn't hear if you said this, did you go home or did you stay down in Florida? I did go home to Colorado, which was, was wonderful because Colorado is a beautiful state and you can go outside and be distanced from everyone and, and still uh, keep your sanity. <laughs> yeah. And so then when it became time to move to DC to start your internship at JTCC, um, did you have any hesitation about traveling across the country in the midst of everything going on right now? Yeah, absolutely. And I still had a lot of stuff in Florida that I had to pack up to and Florida being one of the, the hotspots now. Uh, thankfully, my dad traveled with me and we were able to pack up and be in and out in less than 24 hours. But definitely it's traveling in this time. You have to be so conscious of of every little thing. So it was definitely a bit nerve wracking. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been nuts. I actually, I was on a plane, I guess, the beginning of this month, and I don't need to do that again anytime soon. It was not yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you hearing around the JTCC in terms of future competitive opportunities? Are you guys going to be putting on more tournaments uh, in conjunction with UTR or with USTA or anybody else for that matter, or, you know, I know JTCC hosts a big ITF event every year. Um, we don't know if that's happening, right? I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's wild. And, and to think that things are still getting canceled when it feels like we're starting to come back, I think is that almost hurts a bit more, but it's definitely the right thing to do in terms of having a, a slow return to society, but but I think the UTR, it went really well and was very successful, but it was also a very small group of, there was eight players in every flight. And so I think we're still waiting to hear on what's going to happen in terms of how future competition is gonna go forward because you can't do every tournament in a bubble like they're doing out in Greenbrier right now, even though that's, we're very lucky to have and be able to watch some competitive tennis. Uh, it's it's hard to to have that at every level. Sure, sure. sure. And I, I know, you know, USTA is trying to create that similar type of bubble for the U.S. Open. And, you know, we're seeing with Major League Baseball, we're already seeing breaches. We saw a breach at World Team Tennis. Um, it's, it's challenging. So it'll be interesting to see how things kind of – tweak and, you know, manipulate moving forward. Um, 
what are your long-term goals? Like, let's say your five-year plan. I know it's not long-term, but but when you're 22, it's long-term. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's more areas I'd, I'd like to, to be in, kind of like I talked about earlier. I'd love to be in a job where I'm focusing on giving back through tennis and focusing on that grassroots programming. Um, um, but also maybe in college tennis, I, I am really passionate about, you know, helping those teams stay and, and keep those opportunities for the players at those schools. So um, I wish I had a more clear five year plan. I'm still working on it. Um, but but I think finding that direction I want to be in tennis is is my biggest priority right now and what I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. So your school that you played tennis at is a division two school as you mentioned earlier in the u.s we don't hear a lot of junior coaches junior families talking about division two as a real opportunity for junior players to play at the collegiate level you're here to say otherwise can you <laughs> give kind of the elevator pitch for division two college tennis and why families need to start looking at these programs as great options for their kids? Absolutely. And I think the the tag phrase, the NCAA tag phrase for division two is make it your make it yours. And I think that really encapsulates the whole idea of it is that I was able to have an incredible academic experience as well as that tennis experience because you know at the end of the day if you're not getting a quality education you're, that's what you're, you're ultimately there for. And so I was really looking for a school that had both and division two was a great place to look. And in terms of the balance between the two, often division one tennis is kind of seen as your job at that level. Yeah. Um, and division three is seen more as a secondary thing to education. I just really like the balance that division two provided. Can you tell us what a typical day looked like for you while you were there? Yeah, absolutely. I I ended up getting in a routine where I woke up around 6.30 in the morning, and that's when I was my most productive at work, so I'd try and, and do my homework then. And then I had classes uh, throughout the morning and early afternoon, and then practice and weights was every day 3 to 6 in that time frame. And then I eat dinner and go to bed and <laughs> do it all again. And what about during season? During season, yeah, it's it definitely sleep becomes a bigger priority. So uh, definitely going to bed earlier, but a lot of match time you have to plan for that. And you know, you might not, especially when you're traveling. You know, you could be gone three days out of the week, missing classes and having to make up assignments. Uh, we were always working on homework on the bus. That was that was always you can always see players with their laptops out. So it definitely you have to find a way to to keep that balance. It's not automatically there, but it de it was a fun schedule. I I miss being in season. Yeah, and I've talked to a lot of college players who have talked about how learning time management serve them so well, not just during their student athlete days in college, but then once they moved out into the real world, you know, into a, a job or in, on the pro tour, whatever it is that they move into. Can you address that a little bit and talk about how your time management skills are serving you in your position with Tennis for America at the JTCC? Yeah, great question. I think one of the, the biggest lessons that I learned from someone was that you should focus 100% of, have 100% of your focus on what you're doing at the moment. You know, when you're on the tennis court, thinking about what you have to do after or homework, or, you know, if you have a girlfriend or boyfriend, like that's not gonna serve you. What's gonna serve you is being on the court and making the most of your time there. And same if you're in class, like it's easy, to be on your laptop, you know, scrolling through Facebook, but really making sure you're present in class will save you so much time later down the road as you're cramming for a test. So I think that's the biggest lesson I've learned and I'm still learning about time management, but it's, that is the biggest lesson I would say. 
And how are you applying that now in this role with, with JTCC? Yeah, I think like once you get a task, I think just taking care of it as soon as you possibly can, uh, not only kind of boost your credibility in, in the office, but, but helps you make sure you're on top of everything. You're not thinking about everything in your, your head as you are moving forward. Um, so, so yeah, just, just taking each task at a time, focusing hundred percent on that, doing it well, and then moving forward. Mm -hmm. What is your next project at the JTCC? Do you know yet? Yeah, the big one we've been working on is virtual programming. So that's, it's a huge task to try and attempt to teach tennis online, especially to underserved communities where kids probably don't have rackets and balls and, how can we get them best prepared for when they are on the court to, to make the most of their time there? So we can teach them scoring. We can teach them the lines of the court. We can teach them what a split step is and having that before they even come to a lesson or come to uh, a group practice that will, will allow them to experience success on the court much quicker and increase their enjoyment of the game. So that's what we're working on right now is – figuring out how to make it possible, really. I mean, it's tough if you're talking about kids who may or may not have ever watched a tennis match, you know, or watched anybody even playing for fun, um, trying to communicate clearly, especially with elementary school age kids or preschool age kids. It's, it's a challenge in the best of situations. I can only imagine trying to do it virtually and find an approach that resonates with them and that keeps them excited and wanting to come back and learn more the next day or the next week. Mm -hmm. um, that's really tough. What kind of technology do you have available to you at JTCC to develop all of this virtual training? So I think we have pretty much what, what everyone else has, basic Zoom, uh, Google Classroom, and, you know, the creativity in our heads of what we can come up with, with, you know, if, if it's sharing YouTube videos and we, we're still trying to develop all the programming because, like you said, it is it is a huge challenge and and most, I think a lot of organizations are choosing to kind of avoid it, but I think it's it, COVID's not going anywhere. So we might as well find ways to reach out to the community and get kids on the court who still wouldn't have had the chance. So I think it's more critical now than ever to try and figure out and solve this problem. I agree with you. And I, you know, one of the kind of challenges too is especially when you're dealing with kids from under underserved areas where they may, if they have any screen at all at home, it may just, there may just be one, one cell phone or one tablet or one laptop and mm -hmm. multiple children needing to access that for schoolwork or parents needing to access it for working from home or whatever the situation is. So, um, you know, and for a while libraries were closed. So I don't know if they're open where you are, but you know, the kids having even access to a screen to consume the content that you guys are trying to create is also going to be a challenge. And um, I know I've talked to a lot of teacher friends of mine and mm -hmm. friends of mine who have kids that are, you know, school age, mine are all grown up, but I mean, it's just a huge kind of mountain to try and climb right now. Absolutely. And yeah, I think our next step is in talking with the school districts on on uh, first what their plan is, which I'm sure, you know, changes day to day. Every day, yeah. Yes. Um, and, but also if there's a plan to provide technology to the children to allow them to complete their schoolwork and then how, if we can maybe make use of that through after school programming. So we have yet to speak with the schools, um, but that's definitely, it's, it's being creative, it's being scrappy and trying to figure out what you have and how to make the most of it. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, to me, I think it's awesome that you're in that situation and, and having the opportunity to really create from ground zero something that can be used and adapted in this crazy time that we're all living in. 
but also the fact that you're a recent college grad, you know, it's not like you're my age and very far removed from what these kids that you're trying to serve are going through. You, you just finished college, you know, the challenges yeah. of being in school and balancing school with leisure time and all of these things. So um, what a great opportunity to have somebody you know, like you there <laughs> to, to do this kind of work. And, and also, you know, your generation, it has grown up with this technology. And so this is second nature for most of you. Um, you're on top of the newest trends, the <laughs> newest platforms, and know how to relate that back to socializing and, and relationship building and all of that. Whereas, you know, my generation, we're, we're all about the phone call and, you know, sometimes even letter writing. Ah, <laughs> that's how old I, am. <laughs> I think it's really cool that, that JTCC is invested in this and that the ITA has been able to create this opportunity for recent grads to kind of jump right in with both feet and, and make a difference in the tennis world and hopefully to help bring tennis back to the sport that it used to be, you know, in its heyday in the eighties mm -hmm. beforehand. Yeah. So um, I, I'm really excited at the prospect of what you're doing and what your peers are doing around the country in these programs and wish all of you just all the success. I'm, I'm looking very forward to watching your progress and, and maybe you'll check back in with us in a few months and let us know how things are going and, and what you're learning and, you know, I'm sure things will look very different, hopefully, um, in a few months. But yeah, it'll be fun to check back in with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Lisa, for for giving this a platform and allowing me to share about how incredible a program that the ITA and the AmeriCorps and the JTCC have all come together to create because they they're committed to giving back to the community. So I think that's very special. So thank you so much for your time. Sure. And to those of you watching, if you want more information, I typed a link to the ITA's article on Tennis for America. It's at the top of the comments. So take a look for that and you can read more about the program. And um, I'm sure we'll be doing more of these as the year goes on. And once applications become available for next year, hopefully we'll be promoting that as well. And Gabby, just all the best to you. Stay well, stay healthy, stay safe, and go get them, kid. <laughs> Thank you so much. Same to you. Stay safe. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everybody.